Okay, so when you're in M3, we're gonna go to Accounts Payable. You're going to choose a vendor. So let's just look at FedEx. We're gonna show all so we can see the history. We see all of these different invoices that were paid. We can see that the invoice was scanned in for all of them. We can see that all of the checks have cleared the bank except for this last one. So if we wanted to enter a new invoice, we would go to new on this top right. So the invoice number, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you enter it exactly as the invoice shows it because that's how M3 is going to tell if you've duplicated an invoice. So if something has been entered twice, if the vendor sends it to you again, um, M3 will turn it red right here if it's already been entered and say like, hey, this has already been entered into the system. So you'll wanna make sure that it's exactly as seen on the invoice. If an invoice doesn't have an invoice number, you need a company policy of how you're going to enter that invoice. So um, using the invoice date, for example. So today is July 26, so we might enter 2021, July 26, if that's the date on the invoice. Just make sure you have a policy to enter it the same way every single time so that, um, Again, you can catch any duplicates that were entered. So let's say, I don't actually have an invoice in front of me, so let's just say this invoice was for $500. And the accounting period date, let's, well, it's already the end of July. Let's say, let's pretend like it's the beginning of July and this was actually a June invoice. So we are gonna enter it with a June 30th date because even though it's the beginning of July, you wanted to hit the financials. If it was an invoice for June, you wanted to hit the financials in June if those um, financials aren't complete already. So let's say the invoice date, you wanna keep this accurate. So no matter, even if you received an invoice right now from last year, you want to enter that accurately in your system. So let, let's go ahead and do that. Let's say that we found an invoice from July 15th, 2020. We are gonna enter that accurately and we're gonna keep the due date accurate. So say it was net 15, so it was due the 30th of 2020. We're gonna enter that accurately so that when we run our aging report to show what invoices are coming up due, so we make sure we know what to pay, that's gonna come up as like way past due, hey, pay this immediately. Okay, so we can see that a GL code popped up as a default. So we know that FedEx is usually coded to postage and delivery charges. You can put your um, description here. This is the internal description that's gonna go with the financials. So this one up here is the one that's gonna print on the check. That's gonna help the vendor apply the payment. This one down here is gonna help you know what you spent money on. So maybe this was for overnighting um, mortgage payment. And this is a $500 invoice. So all of it obviously is not going to be that. Let's say that was $50, probably still not that much, but, um, and let's just choose another GL account. I don't know what else FedEx might be. So I'm gonna to not waste our time, just choose a random account and then you can put your description there. And let's say that was the remainder of the invoice. So you can see these two lines added up to $500. So it's fine with that. If it hadn't, then we would see that the total down here, see it's red, does not match the total up here. So we would need to keep itemizing and coding the invoice until the total's matched or you know, edit one of these. So from that point, you would save that invoice so now it's a pending invoice. So um, like we mentioned in the previous video, this can still be edited and it can still be deleted. When it's Once it's posted, it can be paid and it cannot be edited any longer. Okay, so now we're going to attach an invoice to this um, invoice in M3. So we're gonna attach the actual PDF document. So you need to have the PDF um, saved in your C drive in this folder right here. So for this property, it's M3 space scans. And if you didn't have this folder in your C drive of your computer, you would need to right click and go to new folder and create that. And that's where you would save all of your invoices to scan them into M3. So we would choose one and continue. So now it's ready to be posted. We would go to post and you could post each invoice. So if you were just entering one invoice, you go ahead and post it. You're more likely gonna be entering a whole batch of accounts payable invoices at one time. So you could leave them all pending until you were done with the batch and then post for all vendors. And if you were doing it for a batch, there would be a whole list of invoices. And if you click this little dark black check mark right here, if you click it, it would check off all of them. That's a lot faster than individually checking off, you know, 20 invoices and you would click post. Okay, so that is the basics of entering an invoice and accounts payable, um, scanning in the invoice so that it's attached and you can view it later. 
and seeing whether it was paid and viewing the details of that check. So just remember, go to show all when you get into accounts payable so that you can see all of the invoices, not just the pending ones. And also towards the beginning of the year, you're going to want to note that this is just for the current fiscal year. So in January, all of a sudden, nothing's going to be showing up because it's just going to be for that year. So you'll want to hit this little plus sign right in the center of the screen, and that will show the previous year as well. And then you can just keep on hitting that plus sign to see more and more years back and see all of that history.